What a blessing. Now, if we really come to praise the Lord's name this morning, it would occupy most of our time, and then that way we wouldn't be critical of others. No. Just come in and give the Lord the praise that's due his name and leave. What a wonderful, wonderful thing that would be. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 4. And uh, while you're turning there, uh, I always covet your prayers as your pastor, uh, making decisions, or even, when they say recommendations, <coughs> to one of the churches of the living God is not a light thing. And uh, if, you, uh, if you do that, uh, we need to take it in sincerity. Acts chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. And as they spake unto the people, the priest, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, and put them in hold unto the next day, and it was now, for, now, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their, that their rulers and the elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of, kindred, of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they ask, by what power do do by excuse me, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined examined of the good deed done in done to the evident man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which the were set at naught of the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for is there for there is none under the none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned men and ignorant, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word as it lays before us, Lord. Uh, we consider it all to be the full counsel of God. And we thank you that you've given that in our own home tongue that we may study it and that we might rejoice in it, that we might feast on it. God, we pray this morning that you'd speak to the lost and speak to all of us here as one body. Sinners saved by grace, and that's it. That's what we approach you as this morning. And we give you the praise to meet with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we'll be preaching on the thought, have you been with Jesus? Have you really stood next to Jesus? Have you been close enough that, that he had an impact on your life. It, you know, it, it's a very marvelous testimony for unsaved men. They took note and said, these have been with Jesus. You know, it's one thing to learn this book, but it's quite the other that when you walk away, they know that you have been with Jesus. Yeah. You know, Lord Jesus was a very compassionate man. He was a very understanding man. He was a man that, that uh, came to seek and to save the lost. And he accomplished it. He did it. Amen. And all those men learned that from him. They, they all understood and know. So uh, I would ask you this morning,
morning, if you were looked on by other men, would they take note and say, you've been with Jesus? Now, uh, in the first verse back in our text, uh, uh, Acts 4, the first verse, and as they spake to the people, now they, meaning the apostles, and they which were spreading the gospel, uh, people don't like to hear the truth. That's right. Now they, they like to hear about the Bible, and they like to hear God is love, and they like to hear all the, the, the fruity, good feeling things, but they do not like the gospel. Why was the Sanhedrin so mad? Is because what they were doing, Christ said, his apostles said, that's inadequate. You know, the worst thing that you can hear in your ears sometimes because of our boastful pride is this, is you're inadequate. You're, you're not good enough. You're, you're, you're not effective enough. And, and so the Sadducees were upset because they were told what you're teaching is ineffective. It, it, it does nothing. And, and it began to upset them. And I, I love the full counsel of God. I, 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 I love this book. But to go up to somebody and begin to reveal them truths that's far above their head will do nothing but confuse them. That's all it'll do. And the Sanhedrin were jealous. They were upset. They were angry. And uh, so, uh, as frequently as it is done, they locked them up. And as they spake the people and the uh, and as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Now, the, the two sects of Jews were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the Sadducees says there is no resurrection. Now, I've often thought that <coughs> and wondered why they even worshiped God if they denied the resurrection, because, listen, if there's no resurrection, there's no accountability. If there's no resurrection, I can pretty much do whatever I want to. Because you know what? The, the, there's, you know why people hate the doctrine of a, of a resurrection? They don't want the accountability. If you stand before, if there is a resurrection, and dear friend, there is, you'll stand before the mighty accountable. And that's really what they want to avoid. That really they could care less about a living resurrection. What they were wanting to get away from it is the accountability to a sinless, righteous God. And so they came in on them. And notice what it says, being grieved that they taught the people. They, they were teaching there is a resurrection, and they were teaching there's one actually that's already been resurrected, and his name is Jesus. And so that, that bothered them a great deal. And they preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Yeah. Now, preacher boys, you look at me, and you underline in that Bible, they preached through Jesus. You know what? It's a good thing to preach. It's a wonderful thing to have Bible institutes and seminars. But you know what I want, Jared? I want to preach through Jesus. Because I've preached both ways. And listen, you come up empty every time if, if he don't show up. And, and, and so we find then that they were very bold in what they said. And they were preaching through Jesus. Now notice in verse 3. And they, meaning the Sanhedrin, uh, and they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word believed. Now those were baptismal re regeneration. I want to put out that the Bible says they believed, and we find that, that Peter and his buddies were in the clink, so there was nobody to, to baptize those people. And it says they just believed. Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ is who He says He is? Do you believe the, that Jehovah God, the great God of the Bible, sits on His throne even as we speak? 
See, that's the real click of things, is your belief in the person of Christ. You know what? I'm glad of the truths of the Word of God. I'm glad that God opened my mind to all five or six points. Blessed be the name of God. But you know what? I, what, what I hold most dear to me is my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. He came. He was sinless. He finished the work. He gave the sacrifice Amen. and he rose right. again. Uh, well, what more could you want than right, that? Right, right. And Amen. so we find that uh, these people, and maybe they were baptized down the road. I don't know. But the Bible sure didn't say nothing about it. And you know what? This is what we need to do. If the Bible don't say it, don't, don't infer it. Yeah. Don't, don't take it for granted. You need to go with just what the Bible says. And so we find these men. Uh, it said 5,000 men. And if you remember, in, in the day of uh, the feeding of the 5,000, this is how it was written, is uh, 5,000 men besides women and children. So I don't know. Maybe there were some women and, and, and children saved here as well. And the reason why is the women were never counted. You know, in the in the first five census of the United States of America, the the women weren't counted. Well, I think about they were counted, but they didn't get to list their name. Not till eighteen fifty, and and so that wasn't necessarily a new thing. So, uh, and again, I don't want to add to the Word of God, but where there's some women saved and some children saved, well, I don't know, but we know that 5,000 men were saved. You know what? That was more than Pentecost. And, and we, find that, <clears throat> we find that these individuals, it said they believed and never mentions baptism, whatever. It just says that they believed. And the number of men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and scribes. Now, I want you to see that uh, they got a group together to go against these apostles, to go against God's men. You know what? Uh, listen, there's going to be a group of people always come out against the truth. Against what the Bible teaches, there's always opposition and we need to remember that. You know, if you remember that, you won't be taken by surprise when it comes. A lot, of, a lot of the problem today is that when trouble arrives on the scene, we're shocked. And, and certainly that's not what the Bible teaches. Verse 6, And Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander... Now, I, I often wonder about John and Alexander. I am not sure which who, which John this is. You might, uh, you might give me insight. And then it also mentions Alexander. And you know, down the down the road a little bit, is it in Timothy or Thessalonians? He said the Bible says Alexander the Coppersmith. What does it say? Have done me great harm. Yeah. And, and, and so I want you to see that. These were individuals familiar with the, the person and the story of Christ. Just because you're familiar with it does not make you saved. It, do, it doesn't make you born again. I don't know if that's John the Apostle. I'm assuming it is not. But uh, it lists some people that come out specifically against the Apostles. And, and it, it lists their name here. Now, in verse 7... And when they had set them in the midst, or the middle, or in the center. You know what? People want to intimidate us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So they came up with this idea to put them boys in chairs. And all these, and all these great men and Jews just stand around them. You know what? Intimidation is still out there. If you don't believe that, preach the word of God. And people can stand and oppose you right to your face. And you know what their goal is? It's to intimidate you. And you, you, the end of intimid intimidation is this, is that you'll quit talking about it. Mm -hmm. Don't be intimidated by the world. Don't be intimidated, uh, again, you know, when the opposition comes on the scene, because that is part of what we do. And it is to be anticipated if we're very vocal. And notice the question, by what power 
And I don't know if that's energy power or authority. I've heard it preached both ways. Or by what name have you done this? Now, power seems appropriate because, listen, when you heal a man that's never walked in his life, that's something. You know, uh, it, it takes a great miracle of God to cause that to happen. All of you, except for uh, Brother Ken and his wife, remember our adopted daughter, Anna. And Anna never walked. She stood a few times, but she never walked. It wasn't because she wanted to. It's uh, because she couldn't. It's because she wouldn't. You know why people don't serve God uh, any better than they do most times? It's not because they can't. It's because they won't. And there is a huge difference. So, y'all remember Anna broke her leg, and, and, and me and Donna uh, were in Bandy, and they came down, and they showed us her x-ray. And you could, you could read through her bone. There was just nothing there. And so, we find here, in addition to just standing and restoring this man, his bones came together. They, they were filled and made strong, and he went running around the temple, praising God. See, there was a huge thing to this miracle. And they, you know, you know how mir real miracles are still done today? By the power of God. And they're not going to happen without that. Without, without the, the power of the Almighty, what will happen is nothing. So in, in the day which we live, what did they do to replace that? The flesh. Let's see how much we can work her up. You know, God ain't within a thousand miles of that mass. And, and so we find then that as, uh, as uh, they're questioning them, they, they want to know about the power, about what did you do this? And then I think more, more really... It, uh, concerning authority was the second part by what name? By what name do you do this? You know what? When we go out, uh, a lot of times there's nothing wrong with it uh, and, and just say Brother Kenny and I or Brother Jared and I are street preaching and, and somebody says, now what authority do you come out here and do this thing? Now a lot of times we think, well, New Testament Baptist Church but you know what authority I preach on is the Lord Jesus Christ. By his authority, I do this thing. And uh, you know what? They didn't want to hear it, but that's exactly what Paul, uh, Peter told them. Now notice um, the next thing that's in just uh, integral to the preaching of the gospel. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, you know what? I, I want that more than anything else. If I get up to preach the gospel, I'm going to be full of the Holy Ghost. And you know what? People can say that what they want, say, well, that's a Pentecostal teaching, but you would be lying to me if you said you're always full of the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Spirit present? Sure. But he ain't always full. If you don't believe that, we're, we're, we're making a huge study of Psalms in uh, Adam's class, right? Do you believe David was always full of the Holy Ghost? I don't. You think when he ran to Bathsheba that that was the will of the Almighty? See, if he'd been full of the Holy Ghost, he wouldn't have done it. Because that, you know what, that's, that's exactly against the character of God, is it not? Right. And, and, and so we find there that... <laughs> As the old saying goes, there's good days and bad days, is there not? There's time when you're communing with the Spirit of God, and there's other times when, when it's just gone. There's nothing there. You're cold and indifferent and, and not even submissive to prayer. And, and you know what? We do, instead of anticipating them and saying, hey, this is part of the road, that will get you down for salvation. He'll give you prompts to quit. He'll, he'll give you ideas, say, you know what, this is foolish anyway. And, and, and so we find that our desire ought to be, as David was, I mean, excuse me, as, as Peter was in this situation, 
full of the Holy Ghost, absolutely given to the will of God. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Now, you know what? He th th That doesn't seem like much, but he was holding them accountable then. He was saying exactly to who, who he, this was being addressed. He said, I want you to know the rulers, the, the, the Levites, the, the priests. I want you to know you're accountable, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Now, there's been very few times if ever, I, I'm, I'm thinking back across my ministry and sometimes I, I'm forgetful that I said, hey, you listen. But you know what? If God told me to, I'd do it. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember this. You remember, and I'm not going to say the, the people, but those of you that were at Bunkers Mills with us, I heard Brother Downs point at somebody and call him out by name. And you know what? With what that bunch was doing, I believe it was in the will of God. And that's exactly what Peter was. He says, listen, this is you ungodly, blasphemous Jews. This is for you. This is what I, what God is directing toward you. You listen. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Now, I'm not going to get down on this for very far, but I want you to see that that, that impotent means no power. It, it means inability. It means you can't do it. Now, and you know, this is a great type of salvation is, listen, we're all impotent. We're born in this uh, into this world with no ability, no strength, nothing at all that would draw us unto the person of Christ. And if you remember, oh, uh, you know, you remember what that boy wanted? He wanted money. He wanted something that this world had to offer. He wanted something that would get him along one more day. And we find he wasn't asking for it. And, Joe, and, and, and uh, Peter didn't say, listen, you pray this for me and all will be well. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And you know what? He did it. You know what? Nothing that the old boy did. He was impotent. He had, he had no ability. He could not do the job. And, and, and so we find that leaves us kind of in a helpless situation, does it not? Mm -hmm. And what I found about people in general, and especially American people, we don't want to be in a situation where there's nothing we can do. You know, that's really the growth of Armenian doctrine is we want to be able to do it. Right. You're right. No. Uh, yeah, it, it really doesn't have to do with heresy. It has to do with us. It has to do with the pride of this stinking flesh. And, and, and so we find then that he says, listen, we did it by the power of God. Then notice... Uh, uh, verse 10, be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand before thee whole. All of Jesus. This, meaning Christ, this is the stone which was set at naught, or that means no, or it means rejection. It was set at naught. You know what? Most people today, and this is getting to be a very popular belief here in the good old USA, they think nothing of Christ. If you don't believe that, look at some of the filth we've got going now. Listen, it used to be an abomination, and something you kept quiet if there were uh, Sodomites around, and now it's celebrated. That's where we're at. Yeah. That, that, that's where we've came as, as a nation. And why? Because you don't hear the name of Jesus. You, you don't hear him lifted up. You don't hear him in power. And listen, if you, uh, if you hear something on TV, it looks like a laser light show from the 80s. God ain't within a thousand miles of that. 
And so we find them that they were very bold and said, this is the Christ. This is the one that you rejected that is in fact the very Son of God. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Not baptism. Not the Holy Ghost. Not the church. This name, Jesus Christ, the only answer to sin. That's it. Nothing, not plus nothing, minus nothing. Right. He is the answer to the Lord uh, to, to sin in its entirety. Neither is there salvation in any, in any other, for is there, there is none un, other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, uh, I have I, I never had close Catholic friends until recently, and, and, and I, I have a few now. And I consider them as dear friends. And but some of the stuff they they do is just abject heresy. They they come up here and they, they have their little cake and their wine and they get in a line and he does this. You know what he's doing? He's taking on the role of the Almighty. That's right. It, it's not his to give. And you know, this is the sad truth. They're taking it hook, line, and sinker. Very sad thing, is it not? When, when they made it so obvious, it, it's Jesus Christ plus nothing minus nothing. And, and so we see then, as the Lord's people, this ought to be what we teach and preach, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 13 now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, uh, you know, if you were looked at analytically today, and they were saying, you know what, I think that bunch down at New Testament is causing a few problems, would they see boldness is what we preach? Would they see boldness of what we teach? And, and I really believe you've, nothing else you can take from this, this section of text is boldness gets the job done. Uh, and listen, it's very easy to be bold inside this these four walls, isn't it? Yeah. But out there, it's quite a different story. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have my church people to support me. I don't have people praying for me. I don't have people amening me. And out there, it becomes quite a different thing, mm -hmm. is it not? That's right. And, and, and so I want you to see that they were in the back of the most precarious position that you could be in, and they still, still spoke boldly the name of Christ. Now, when they saw that the now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned men. Now, I want you to see that the first thing that they really took note about them is they weren't educated people. Now, you know, uh, uh, I, I have people at work and almost chuckle when they learn it. And uh, I have my degree hanging on the wall in my office, and they come in and look at it and says, "You got a degree." <laughs> And I said, yeah, I worked a long time to get that done. And I guess because I talk like I'm from Stewart County. Uh, and I'm a crazy Baptist preacher that they never dreamed that I had a four-year degree in nursing. So what are they taking note of? The fact that I have a degree in nursing or the fact of how I act? You know what? I'd rather be known by what I do, haven't you? Any day of the week, not what I have, not what I possess, but what I do. And whether you want that or not, you're getting it. Uh, you are known by how you present. Whether you have 15 degrees on your wall and you uh, have no compassion, you'll be known by not having compassion. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You're you're known by what you do, not by what not by, by what you possess. And, and and so we find there as uh as they had made this assessment, they were unsure what they were go gonna do now. 
Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. Now, uh, unlearned, uneducated, that's what they're surprised at me at work. And ignorant. You know, ignorant is a different sort of word, is it not? Ignorant means that you don't know about things. Such as, you, most of y'all, maybe except for Donna, would be ignorant of what is a good potassium level and what a potassium level would be that would kill you. And, the, and, and it's about that narrow. And if you don't, if you're not in that window, you know what? Your heart's going to stop. Right? Now, I just told you that. And by the way, it's 3.5 to 4.5 units per deciliter. And you know what? You're no longer ignorant of that. Right? But I taught it to you. So that means you just didn't know the fact. It didn't mean you were stupid. Right? Quite the difference. And he said, these are uneducated men, and they're speaking the things of the law. These are uneducated men that, that, that make a living by catching fish. And they're speaking of the true story of grace. See, the Lord will solve your ignorance problem. He really will. You know, uh, if you follow that, when they were uh, being sent out, uh, they were uh, they were amazed every time that these poor people, and you find the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of a poor, of a poor carpenter, speaking to the elders of Israel as a 12-year-old boy. See, that comes by miracles. It doesn't come simply by study. And so we find, we, we find that as well. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They were amazed. They could not believe. They had the understanding of the person of God like they did. They, they could not believe it. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, how are they going to take knowledge of you? First of all, uh, via your testimony. That's how they take knowledge. Now, thank God for our little group, but how do you know that I'm a man? The gruffy face. Got a, a wear the right garment, right? I have a number of children. I'm a God, right? Hope you've come to that conclusion. How do, how do we know that babies are ladies? You see what I'm saying? And they took note that these were godly men and they had been with God. Now, if you run around cussing, if you run around in, in ungodly garments, you know what? They're not going to take note that you've been with Christ. They're going to take a note that you're like everybody else. Right? Mm -hmm. So I asked you this morning, could that be said of you? We looked at everything up to the point. All the healing of the, of, of, the, of the crippled man. And down to the scrutiny of the Sanhedrin. And they couldn't get around the fact they'd been with Christ. <clears throat> what about you? Could they say, yeah, I don't know? Or, could, or would they be, there's no doubt in my mind. These people have been with Christ. They understand the Bible. They love the Bible. There's no doubt in my mind. They took note that we had been with Christ. Now, really and for truly, only you can answer that. I can't answer it for you. Do you have an experience with Christ? I fully believe experiential salvation. I yeah. wouldn't take a little old empty prayer to the grave of me. Amen. What Amen. About you? I'm not talking about accepting. You know what? Whether you accept it or not, Christ is on the throne. Amen. Amen. No matter what you think about it, He is. So it comes down to this. Brother Junior was talking about 
uh, walking up that old road to his mother and daddy's house. Then the meeting, they put him on. No, the meeting didn't put him on. The guy in the road put him on. He walked up the hill and couldn't get away from the Holy Ghost. And the Lord saved him. I like that a whole lot better than you asking Jesus to forgive you. Right. Don't you? I like that a whole lot better than repeating a sinner's prayer. Right. You know what? That's the most ungodly thing Amen. the devil ever thought of. Amen. There been, there, there's been boatloads of people split out in the middle of hell thinking that they were all right. Yeah. Very scary, isn't it? Yeah. So what about you? Could they take note that you've been with Jesus? Could they say that's one of those crazy people that go down to the New Testament Baptist? I can tell them you would have done them. Be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Where would you be? Yeah. 